Good evening, and welcome to our virtual exhibition opening for Anne Frank, A History for Today. My name is Caroline Dromaguet, and I'm the acting president and CEO of the Canadian War Museum and the Canadian Museum of History. Pour commencer, j'aimerais souligner que le Musée canadien de la guerre se trouve sur le territoire traditionnel non cédé de la nation algonquine Anishinaabe. I would also like to extend a special welcome to the many Holocaust survivors and their families joining us today from around the world. The story of Anne Frank and her diary is one of the most poignant of the Second World War, reflecting as it does the stories of so many individuals of all ages during that horrific conflict. The exhibition we are launching tonight marks the 76th anniversary of Anne's death in late February 1945. The exhibition was developed by the Anne Frank House in Amsterdam, and we are proud to partner with an institution that works tirelessly to preserve Anne's memory and tell her story around the world. To open tonight's event and set the tone, I would now like to introduce Flora Love Katz and the Ottawa Klezmer Band in a beautiful rendition of a very famous Holocaust song, Stille, Stille, Quiet, Quiet, which was recorded pre-lockdown. Following the performance, you will hear a special video message recorded by Her Excellency Inez Koposa, Ambassador of the Kingdom of the Netherlands to Canada. Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, it's a privilege for me to have the opportunity to participate in the virtual opening of the Anne Frank exhibition. I join you from my home here in Ottawa, as like you all, I'm confined to my house due to the lockdown. 
And although I really enjoy my home and my neighborhood, I do feel limited in my freedom. Like most of you, I miss meeting people in person, I miss meeting my friends, I miss eating out in restaurants. But these circumstances that we're all living under are absolutely nothing compared to the confinement of living in a tiny space shared with eight people in constant fear of being discovered and with no access to fresh air or to the outside world. Despite living in these terrifying conditions, in the face of the worst genocide the world has ever known, Anne Frank filled her diary with messages of inspiration, strength and optimism. She even managed to do it with a sense of humor at times. She writes from the perspective of a teenager going through puberty, so we can all relate to her perspective. She had no political message in her writing or, or even an objective. She never realized that someday her writing would be read by millions of people all around the world. She just wrote what she experienced in a diary, just as so many of us have done through the centuries. But what makes Anna's message so important is that her daily experiences were not just about the universal struggles in finding your identity, but also about what being discriminated against and excluded means to your daily life and what it does to your development as a young kid. That is why she continues to connect so deeply with people today, especially young people. In her diary, Anne spoke of her yearning for freedom, for peace, for tranquility, and thanks to the substantial role played by the courageous Canadian Armed Forces during the liberation of the Netherlands, all Dutch kids born after 1945 have been able to enjoy that freedom, that peace and tranquility. Not Anna though. In the summer of 1944, the secret annex was discovered. And Anna, then 15 years old, was put on the final transport from the Netherlands to Auschwitz. Her fate serves as a reminder to us all that we should not take our freedoms for granted, ever. Anne's story is a good example of why values such as human rights, democracy and justice exist. Canada and the Netherlands share a very close bond and we both work closely together to promote and to defend these principles. But more than that, our two countries strive to fight prejudice, to fight racism and xenophobia and to act when we witness injustice and to educate everybody, old and young, on the horrors of the past. As Anne herself wrote so beautifully, what is done cannot be undone, but one can prevent it happening again. Thank you. I would now like to introduce a moving and thought-provoking video testimonial by Holocaust survivor Ellie Bolograf, who now lives in Ottawa. It is a personal account from someone who lived in similar circumstances to Anne and went into hiding in the Netherlands, but who survived the war. Ellie's testimonial will be followed by a special video message from students at the St. Mary's High School in Calgary, Alberta, where Anne Frank's story was recently presented in early 2020. As you will see, the story of Anne, so close in age to themselves, had special meaning for all of them. I uh, certainly uh, learned fear and it was instilled in me. I don't think children are naturally afraid. Uh, they're curious usually uh, because I was told, uh, for example, if I was outside playing to stay behind the hedge. And, um, you know, I did play outside uh, because this was a very unusual, it wasn't a normal house. It was a ho little hotel where people came and went. And the, Mrs. Uh, Wetzels, the lady, uh, mother of the, of the brood of children, uh, she was also required to cook in the kitchen. And I often therefore spent time in the kitchen with her, and I played for the boys outside. It was very difficult to find the child, uh, to find one. And I remember when the boys went to, uh, to get sugar cubes from the Germans that sat in the valley uh, against the barn. I remember that clearly. I was told not to come out of the, from the hedge. I could peer through. And then when they reappeared, they would share the, the sugar cubes with me. I definitely learned fear. I do not remember the why. I do remember that I wet my bed for 11 years after the war. I was a very insecure child. 
moving around, one, I moved around a lot, but I, you can instill fear in a child. You know, you can talk about boogeymen and, you know, there's, there's something under the bed or a spider's going to get you. I do recall after the war having a problem uh, being chased by people. My stepfather wanted to play with me, for example. He would run around the table and I would faint. I could not have anyone running after me. So, yes, I, f I learned fear. It's not that anyone injured me physically. I learned fear. I remember uh, the people took me to a church, uh, their church, to uh, normalize the relationship that the child was not Jewish. Uh, of course, it turns out after many years after the war, I learned that most people in town suspected it all along. And uh, there was even a Nazi who told Mrs. Wetzels to keep me, um, to keep that child inside. Uh, that he suspected that I was Jewish, and he, you know, uh, would maybe have to report me if he, if he knew about it. Um, my Jewish identity uh, was not, uh, of course, made evident, but people, although suspected it, um, I do remember sitting in this church and this bag, pointed bag, go over my head where the collection was taken, and it go boing 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 over my head as it went down the row and came back again. Uh, but it was after the war, um, because my p family had been Orthodox Jews, it was expected of me to go to a Jewish school, Cheder, right away uh, from almost when I came back. I was sent to Jewish school, and the Jewish children, came, you know, after the war, started coming back, and uh, those that were left that had been in hiding. Uh, so I started Jewish school right away uh, when I was f five or six years old. Hi, I'm Ivan. I'm Emma. I'm Lucy. Et nous sommes des élèves de l'école St. Mary's High School à Calgary. Last year, the Anne Frank House exhibit came to our school. We were given the opportunity to become tour guides and learn more about Anne's story. We would like to share our experiences with you in the hopes of inspiring you to learn more about Anne Frank. Ce qui a suscité mon intérêt à participer au projet d'Anne Frank fut l'impact de son histoire et comment elle a changé le monde. Cette adolescente a écrit avec tellement de beauté et de calme et ce dans une situation impossiblement difficile et pénible. What inspired me about the Anne Frank story was the bravery and selflessness exhibited by those who hid the Frank family. These individuals risked their lives to protect innocent people in danger without any reward. Without the kindness of people like these, many more lives would have been lost in the Holocaust. Après avoir lu l'histoire d'Anne Frank, je me suis rendu compte que cette jeune fille qui exprimait ses pensées et expériences chaque jour était de mon âge. Elle était une adolescente normale qui a vu sa vie déchirée de façon violente et injuste. Son histoire m'a forcé à réfléchir sur ma propre vie et je suis venu à la conclusion que j'étais privilégié. As I learned and worked in this exhibit, it was especially touching to see how Anne was so thoughtful and optimistic for someone her age, all whilst providing hope for those around her. It was truly inspiring. She lived with so much faith, despite how the world treated her so unfairly. The story of Anne Frank is important, because it shows the impact of the war and of oppression. Anne Frank is not just a name on a memorial. It's a young girl who lost her life because of persecution insensé. Son histoire est malheureusement partagée par des millions de les autres victimes de la Shoah. Elle nous remémore que les victimes de la guerre et des génocides sont des filles et des fils, des mères et des pères, et que c'est notre devoir de faire perdurer leur histoire. Being guided in this exhibit has helped me realize that we must love and respect one another as human beings no matter who we are, and that we must strive to eliminate injustice and violent conflict from our society. Thank you very much for giving us this opportunity. Un message vidéo de Ronald Léopold, directeur général de la maison Anne Frank à Amsterdam, vient compléter la liste des invités spéciaux de ce soir. It's a pleasure to share a few words with you on this special occasion of the opening of the exhibit Anne Frank, a history for today. To present this exhibit in such a prestigious institution fills me with great pride and joy. Our countries have a special relationship that for a large part goes back to the Second World War. Brave Canadian men and women helped to liberate our country, for which we are forever deeply grateful. They are an example to all of us by willing to risk and in many cases sacrifice their own lives 
in order to save that of others. Like their stories, Anne Frank's life story serves as a lens through which we view history. We learn what has happened and why it has happened. But they also serve as a mirror that shows us who we are and who we want to be in today's challenging world. Hence the title of this exhibit, It's a History for Today. Anne speaks to people of all ages, but of course her voice is the voice of the young. And therefore I am delighted that many youngsters from across the country are engaged in this exhibit. I would like to thank the staff of the museum and everybody who was involved in this project for their efforts. And it is my sincere hope that the exhibit will attract and inspire many visitors. Je tiens à remercier chaleureusement toutes les personnes invitées ce soir, ainsi que celles et ceux qui ont participé à cet événement en provenance de tous les horizons. For more details on the exhibition, including how to visit, please go to our website at warmuseum.ca. And when you come, don't forget to visit Forever Changed, Stories from the Second World War. This recent exhibition, curated by Dr. Tim Cook, explores the war's impact on the lives of individual Canadians, including Holocaust survivors and their descendants. Merci d'avoir été des nôtres. J'espère que vous pourrez bientôt nous rendre visite pour voir l'exposition vous-même.